Hello, I will be going through the Docker containerization examples as part of uh, the Easy Waste 2020 HPC Summer School. Um, I will be going have a brief overview of what you expect to be done as part of the um, hands-on sheet. Um, talk, be talking about Docker and an example of a few of simple Docker commands and also this would be an introduction to Docker Hub which is the main repository for all Docker containers. First things first, um, you need to obtain the container um, hands-on examples which have been prepared for the summer school and these are in GitHub and the location of this should be part of your notes. So I will do that first. Um, I've already got the command set up so I don't have to type it. So if I do that, it's in GitHub after the CCS containers hands on. So it's a simple git clone. You clone this and it retrieves the necessary files. And there it is, and it is now under the containers hands-on. This is all done within the um, VM, which has been prepared for the summer school, so you should be able to repeat exactly what I've done and will be doing within the VM. And also note that Docker is actually installed as part of the VM-based um, installation, so you won't have to install Docker yourself. It was there, it's going to be there up and running. Right, um, in the containers hands-on directory, there are several subdirectories and we're interested in the easy waste one. So if we log in to that, we find that there are several files in there. Um, the most important of which is a Docker setup PDF file, which will has the descriptions of all the various exercises part of this. There are uh, other subdirectories. There's the CUDA one, which um, for now I won't talk about. There's a Docker build example files, which have example Docker build files, which I shall be going through it later. There's a PDF, and there's a hello MPI directory, which contains some an advanced, semi-advanced um, Docker file, which will be the final thing you do as part of the um, as part of a dip step by step, and there, there's the slides associated with the with the talk and the summer school itself. So, if we have a look at the uh, PDF, if I can type it, what we have here is a step to step guide to Docker, which will take you through some very ex simple ex Docker examples, lets you build your own Docker file. Um, containers and images from um, Docker files, give some examples of commands to manipulate and um, look at the doc Docker and containers installed on your system, and also some instructions to uh, how to use Docker Hub and good practices, and then the final example. So first things first, like any all good um, computer systems, the first thing you want to do is to run Hello World. So I shall just do a quick cut and paste from here. Run Docker Hello World, and it's worked. Here we have is Hello from Docker. This command actually um, hides a multitude of different processes and it actually goes through what it's been doing as part of the process so it's produced this message and this shows the installation is working correctly which is good so to generate this message docker has actually done four different things first thing it's a client has contracted with docker daemon as i said the daemon is already running and set up um on under the vm um, sometimes you actually have to go through the stages of installing Docker yourself, say if you're running it um, on your laptop in non-VM, um, but there will be instructions on how to do this as part of your um, distribution. The, um, the Docker client is actually just basically the Docker command, which I just ran here. The daemon has pulled the Hello World image from Docker Hub. Docker Hub, as I said, is the essential repository of um, 
Docker, Docker images, and we'll be going through that in a bit. It's actually created a container from an image. So it's taken that static image and actually containing an instance of that image, which you can then actually run. And this is running executable, which produces a hello world. And then this hello world gets, gets printed on your screen. So this is points three and four. So it's a multi-stage process um, and we will be going through each, each stage separately so you can see exactly what's going on when we actually get around to building our own containers. It says you can try something a bit more sophisticated. If you want to do that, you can go ahead and do that now, but I won't be doing that. But what we need to do first before we do anything else is what it suggests here is actually set up an account on Docker Hub and um, this allows you to share and store images with uh, various people around the world. So, and so what we need to do first is to go to Docker Hub. So in your web browser, you go to Docker Hub here and it asks you to sign up. So all you need to do is sign up is creating a unique Docker ID, basically an account name, your email and password, the standard sort of thing. I won't do this now because I've already got a um, account set up, but you have to do this in the first instance, set everything up. And then once you've had everything verified and your Docker ID, you then can go into the sign in screen you can sign in if your username, which for me is Simon W. Encas, and then your password. You sign in and you're in Docker Hub. So this, as I said, is a repository for uh, many, many Docker images. We can have a quick ex click on explore here. And you can see there here, there's approaching 4 million different variable um, Docker images. So there's plenty to play with and you can have a look through various sorts of image types and it lists some of the most popular ones here including the, the Ubuntu one. Um, I won't be going through this now this will be something that you can go away and explore for yourself. So if we just go back to here this is my lander page on Docker Hub and it's got some very old um, Docker images which I created some time ago, which you won't have to worry about for now. So um, I've done that. And also I've logged in via the web, but you can also log in directly via the command line interface. If I do docker login now, you answer my username, if I can spell this correctly. And I am now successfully logged into Docker, so that will allow me to upload um, um, Docker's images which I've created locally on the VM into Docker Hub into my own repository. And I'll just log out, and we'll be doing that later on. So I can log out. Right. So this is that's the basis of Docker Hub. Now, what I should do now is just go through the first uh, few command um, examples on the step-by-step -step guide just to lead you into things and then you can then go on and complete the rest yourself at your own pace. So we've done the docker run hello world. Now what we can try and do is pull a more sophisticated and this is a Debian um, which is a Linux distribution um, Docker image from uh, Docker Hub. So very simple, Docker pull Debian. It goes away, downloads, extracts, gives you some details and it's there and it's downloaded an image or Debian latest. Um, that's the name of the image and this is a tag uh, which uh, the default is always always um, always latest, but this can be any uh, any other thing you want it to be to separate different um, ver versions of the same image. Right um, now, I've pulled this image. Using this image, I can now run a container, and this is section three in the in my notes. So if I just do this again, I can run this Debian. And this, what this does, it runs the um, Docker command. This is the Docker command to actually 
with a command to run actually inside Docker. So it's run. This is the name of container you want to run, and this is what you're actually running inside the command you're actually sort of running inside the container. So I have run basically logged on onto the container and run this uh, run this image and then place back onto the command line. So what we can see here that the name MRS release is Debian GNU Linux. And if I do this on the command line, you can see the name is Ubuntu. So what it's done is it's actually run that command inside the container, which contains um, a different version of Linux or than the actual version of Linux, which I'm running as part of the VM. Um, in addition to that, you can actually run interactively via in this um, container. So if I do run minus IT, it basically means interactive terminal, uh, Debian bash, so run my bash command, and I'm now sat inside the container. As you can see the prompt has changed. I am root, and in general, with Docker containers, you get escalated to root when you actually um, run the container. And this here is the host name, it's the equivalent host name, which is actually the um, ID of the container you're actually running. So I can do the cat etc OSS release again and see that um, I'm inside. Debian container, and if I do ls etc, it looks like that. And if I log out again and do exactly the same command, you can see it's completely different because this is looking at the equivalent file space within the container, and this is looking at the file space on the VM. So they're completely different. So the, the containerized the containerized version is completely different from the, um, the version on the VM because they're, they're different versions of Linux. You can also um, list your Docker images using Docker images command. So these are basically snapshots of um, of Docker containers. So you see we, you've got two here. You've got the Hello World one, which I um, pulled from Docker Hub initially, and then the Debian one, which I've just set up. So um, this will give you a good a brief idea what you can do. Now, if you can go, you can go through the various other examples and they contain a description of what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, one good thing about Docker is it's got a very useful um, help command. So if you type Docker help, it will show you all the various commands associated with Docker and what they do and the various um, options associated with those. And if you do Docker um, help, then the command, particular command you're interested in, see Docker help run, you can see there's an awful lot of options available for that. Or Docker help pull, which are the two main ones we've done so far. I see far fewer options, but um, if you ever get stuck, the Docker help is very useful as well as the, the various um, help pages available on the web. Right, so thus far what we've, we've done is pulled images, pre-built images from Docker Hub, but what you can do, you can actually um, build in images yourself, which um, can be useful if you've got some bespoke software you want to containerize, you can build a Docker file to build, build this bespoke software and then upload this to Docker Hub and allow other people to download the containerized version of your software and get it running simply within in the um, Docker environment. So what we have here are um, three, four separate um, subdirectories, all of which contain um, different example um, Docker files, and Docker files are those things that actually help contain the information required to actually build the individual containers, container images, and 
these will are equivalent to section 7 in the instructions um, and the, these contain incremental um, um, commands um, which um, you have as part of the, the, these examples and I will go through the simplest one which is um, can, this directory here, it just contains a simple docker file and you look at this it just says import from Debian, Debian Buster um, so um, this basically takes the commands from a docker file and um, implements them and, well, and builds the container and there's more details in the actual um, hands-on documentation but what I can do here is do a docker build build um, and then um, minus T to tag it then this is very important it has to be your the name of the tag has to be the name you specified when you signed into into docker so don't use my user um, use your your docker hub um, username then you can call it anything you want to. I'm just going to call this test one and then latest just to show it's the latest version. So do that. And um, of course, I made a mistake. And what do we, what? I think we've got minus T now. Uh, mm, well, well, I've quickly work out what my mistake is. See, because I forgot the um, that that basically um, that tells the, dire uh, the directory where to obtain a Docker file from, and so that basically means get it from the local directory. So. Eventually, I have managed to build the uh, Docker container and tagged it. So if I now type Docker images, you can see now this container is now being set up and is part of the um, essential Docker rep repository, which is on the VM. And I can now I can now run this. Um, so I've now built this my own container. I'm now running in this own container, and as before, before it's it's a Debian container right now you've built it what, what do you want to do you want to um, actually upload this to docker hub so if I now log in to docker hub right let's try again I've now successfully logged in to Docker Hub and now I can actually push this um, container with a Docker push command. And this is basically as described here on the worksheet. So if now, now go to my um, Docker Hub page and reload it you can see now that this um, docker image I prepared earlier just prepared is now part of docker hub and this thing can be downloaded by other people if it's, if it's a public repository and then people can use your container so um, 
so yes so um what you can do, then do now is go through the final three other examples in this this directory which i said give you incremental um, sophistication to the the commands used to actually sort of build your docker file right um as i said before you can list your image docker images by typing docker images you can also look at, look at the running containers by using docker psa there's a distinction between an image and a container an image is like a snap snapshot of a container either something you've just built or something downloaded from um, docker hub and the docker container is an actual running instance of one of those um, docker images as you can see um, when i do a ps minus a it's a bit similar to a, um, a linux ps command that um, when you run a docker container it actually doesn't actually close down the container itself it continues running but um, and minus a shows these but you can there's ways around this and all of these are actually de and ways and this is detailed in the worksheet as well as some more sophisticated um, uh, uses of both docker ps and docker images and how to manipulate docker containers and images on your system um, one final thing before I go in the hello MPI directory there is a an docker file which is more equivalent to the sort of things you'd be doing if you actually create a docker file from a more sophisticated code set in this case it's using MPI an example of using MPI within docker and the docker file contains a number of commands which actually builds the MPI executable and sets those things up these are detailed in the um, um, on the hand sheet that's that worksheet and so it's worth going through that and then possibly actually choose some other software and try and containerize that yourself there is some also some very um, useful information within worksheets about um, good practices about what to do and what not to do when creating your your docker files and continue keep everything neat and tidy on your um, on your system right um, I think people should be in a position now to go ahead and um, try out go go through the, the worksheet systematically I can say it is um, tempting just to do cuts and pastes of all the commands and then just sort of put a tick in the box saying it's all done but it's for your own benefit really if you fully understand what you're doing when you're actually sort of running the re, running these commands and then go away and actually create your own docker files from scratch to actually can try and containerize um, some software which may be of interest to you okay thank you very much for listening and i hope this has been of some use so um goodbye everybody <laughs>